habari yako I am an African. I think that's pretty clear. <laughs> As a kid growing up in Zimbabwe, I was highly intrigued and fascinated by the letter forms I saw in books and magazines, and I spent a lot of time sketching them. It's only when I went to the US to study that I discovered graphic design. Besides running the design school in Harare, I wrote the book on African typography. It's called African Alphabets. It's available on Amazon.com in Nigeria and South Africa. I'm working on bringing it to Kenya and the rest of the continent, where it belongs. And mind you, I use the word alphabets loosely here. They're more like writing systems. We'll take a look at this pictograph from the Jokwe people of Angola. It is the story of creation, and it's called Kutanga. At the top is God, at the bottom is humanity, and on the left is the sun, and on the right is the moon. All the parts lead to God. Nsibidi is an ancient writing system that was devised by the Ejakam people, the Afik people, from southwestern Nigeria, and it is a writing of a secret society, a, a sort of a special interest group. But there are some symbols and signs that we are privy to know and to see. The rest of them are secret, only for initiates and practitioners. The Akan people of Ghana, who also filter into Côte d'Ivoire, created Adinkra symbols about 400 years ago. And these mainly are proverbs and symbols from everyday life that carry wisdom. My favorite one is Sankofa, the first one at the top. Return to the past. Go and get it. Go and reclaim your past. And that's what I'm doing with these African alphabets. In South Africa, they have Bantu symbol writing, and it is practiced mainly by women who paint it on their homes and also weave them into proverbs that make beaded bracelets. Ethiopic of Ethiopia, is a writing used to write Amharic, which is the main language, the national language, and spoken by over 14 million people. It is also the oldest, one of the oldest writing systems in the world. This man here, I call him a Renaissance man, King Ibrahim Joya of the Bamum Kingdom from Cameroon, invented a writing system called Shumom, at the age of 25 in 1896. The writing went through six stages of development in over 30 years. And what you see here, at the top, from the top to the bottom, are three stages. And you, as you can see, there was an effort at each stage to make it more proficient and efficient. The last one is the current Schumann writing. The Vai people of Liberia created a syllabary in the 1800s, and a syllabary, basically like my name, Saki, that's two syllables. So each symbol doesn't, doesn't stand for a word, but it stands for a syllable. The Mende people of Sierra Leone also created a syllabary, the Mende syllabary, and unlike the Vai, it reads from right to left. Africa abounds with beauty, and as Sankofa says, we have to go back there and get our cues from this beauty that surrounds us in the work that, that we do, to inspire us. There are certain groups, you call them tribes, um, that paint their bodies. Now, this is a form of writing, because the people in the group understand what the painting means, and it's for a specific ritual or ceremony. This image is from Zimbabwe. This is a stone sculpture of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe has become well famous for it. And I love this, this shot because these characters remind me of characters from Star Wars, just showing how connected we all are. <laughs> My students at the top and at the bottom, a workshop I ran in Turin in Italy with a group of international students. And these are the fonts that my students design. The object of this is for students to really appreciate the complexity and intricacies of letter forms. 
so that they have respect for, for typography. And this is the work done with my students in Turin at the workshop, all inspired by African alphabets. African alphabets debunk the myth of the dark continent. They lay to rest the lies born out of ignorance that have been leveled at our beautiful Mama Africa, Asante Sana.